Yu Zheng Liu is an assistant research fellow at the Research Center for Applied Sciences at Academy Sinica and an assistant professor in the Department of Physics at National Taiwan University. Dr. Liu received her PhD in physics from the National Tsinghua University in 2013. She worked at Caltech as a postdoctoral associate from 2015 to 2017. She is a materials physicist and her research interests are within an interdisciplinary field of active plasmonics, optoelectronics, with a particular focus on semiconductor nanostructure devices to investigate harvesting, generating and manipulating light at the nanoscale. Please join me in welcoming Professor Eugene Liu. You can go ahead and start, but you're on mute right now. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, so thanks Terry for a nice uh, kind, invite, uh, kind introduction and uh, invite me to be here. It's a great honor to have this chance to present my work here. So good, after, good morning, good afternoon and, and good night because we are all from a different time zone. So today I'm going to uh, talk about our recent work, especially on the lead halide pro sky uh, plasma link nail lasers. So I'm uh, recently a assistant professor at National Taiwan University and assistant research fellow at Academia Sinica Research Center for Applied Sciences, and also a visiting scholar at Caltech work with Professor Harry Edwater. So today, this is uh, my uh, rec recent work that uh, will focus on the two of uh, my work because I, I think I don't have enough of time to go through more detail. So uh, first I would like to thank all my students for their hard work and especially uh, John, he did a lot of work. So my research interest, uh, just give you a brief introduction. My research interest is focused on the active nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterial and ultrafast carrier dynamics and light matter interaction and nanoscale especially and alternative plasma materials. So we are working on the titanium nitride, hafnium nitride, nalbium nitride, and so on. And high performance optical, optoelectronic devices and the quantum information science in the future. So he, I just want to briefly show the a representative publication in the recent three years. So we have uh, uh, reported the uh, several uh, different work. So but all of them are related to light matter interaction, especially at nanoscale. So we are playing with uh, the pro sky quantum dot lacing in a gap plasma nano cavity with ultra low threshold. And we are making an up conversion plasma lacing and using the lead halide pro sky as well as a gap medium. And then we are studying the ultrafast uh, exciton dynamics in the 2D material, especially using the pump core transient absorption to see the ultrafast uh, uh, lock time. So especially uh, we are targeting the hot carrier. This hot carrier, we only can see it by using the ultra uh, pump core transient absorption. This uh, lifetime resolution is uh, typically a femtosecond, less than 100 femtosecond. And then uh, we are studying the dynamically controlled personal enhancement in a gated plasmonic capsule structure. And more recently, uh, just online today, today as in the, the nano laters, uh, we are using the 2D plasmonic crystal to enhance the monolayer MOS to the plasmonic photosensor. We will be able to engineer uh, the absorption by using the 2D, the localized uh, strong field to enhance the absorption in 2D material and also the charge carrier tra uh, transfer dynamics in the 2D material as well to further enhance uh, the uh, uh, photoresponsivity of a 2D phototransistor. So today I'm going to focus on this two work, uh, especially the ProSky uh, plasmonic nail laser. So my work is uh, focused on the using the nanophotonics and plasmonics and make the resonant structure to further enhance, uh, to control the light, the radiation. So the practical application would be like this, it's smart glass and holography displays light fidelity and a LIDAR for the self-driving car and the, the smart house to manage, control the thermal radiation and so on. 
So because I'm physics background, I'm uh, thinking to give you from the physics point of view. So I started with a local uh, electric magnetic field enhanced light matter interaction at nail scale. So we started with a, a modified uh, Maxwell equations, such as uh, light matter in that, in that light interaction with matter. So we have to replace the electric field to electric displacement and also replace the magnetic field B to the magnetic, ma magnetic induction B to the magnetic field H. So we use a modified uh, Maxwell equation to describe the line of matter interaction in, yeah, at a nanoscale. And uh, uh, we are discussing the linear isotropic and homogeneous media especially. So if you are uh, trying to get more theoretical, theoretical background, so please uh, try to find this book, The Principle of Nano Optics. Yeah, this is a book that I use uh, in my lecture. So speaking to the light matter interaction and nanoscale, there can be divided by four parts, the scattering, the absorption, the luminescence, and the thermal emission. So that uh, my research is focused on the using the local EM field to induce the light matter interaction and nanoscale, especially to make laser. So the idea is to, uh, if you, we have a very localized EM field as a previous speaker, it's also using the Professor Ling, also using the surface plasma to do the search, and the same with me. So we are using the local uh, hotspot to further in control the wave vector, the wave length, the amplitude, the phase, the polarization. And most interesting, I'm controlling the luminescence. So if you consider a uh, emitter and put very close to a nano resonator, like a plasmatic nano resonator or a photonic nano resonator, that you will be able to tune the spontaneous emission rate, and which is uh, corresponding to the per cell enhancement factor right here. So I will discuss the, this uh, later. So I just give you an idea. The per cell enhancement factor is a, is a function of the quality factor of a nano resonator and also the mole volume. Yeah, it's directly related to the mole volume and quality factor of a nail resonator. So we are using this kind of a concept to further play with the, a spontaneous the, the emitter coupled to a nail resonator that, that we will be able to study the spontaneous emission and the amplified spontaneous emission, stimulant emission, and super radiance, so on. So speaking to, in this slide, I will give you the uh, short introduction of the per cell enhancement in a nano cavity to increase the emission rate. So uh, assume we have a dipole and we place the, the plasmodic uh, nano cavity uh, very close to the dipole. So we, we will be able to control the distance between the dipole and the plasmodic nano cavity and also control the dipole orientation that we will be able to engineer the coupling strength between the emitter and the, the plasma link nail cavity. So start with the Fermi Golden Rule. So refer to Fermi Golden Rule and tell us that fluorescence decay rate is a spontaneous emission rate of an emitter as corresponding to the uh, LDOS, which is a localized density of optical state. So the spontaneous emission rate, the equation is defined uh, uh, like this. So it's directly related to the local density of op optical state. This is LDOS. So the LDOS, we can simply just solve the green function, especially the imaginary part of a green function by using the boundary condition. So you will be able to uh, see the relation, the direct relation, the spontaneous emission rate of the emitter is uh, directly related to the LDOS, the local density of optical state which means that if you will be able to modify the outdoors, that you will be able to uh, play or control with the spontaneous emission rate. So uh, speaking to the personal enhancement uh, factor, the personal enhancement factor is outdoors inside the cavity over the outdoors in the free space. So if you uh, just, uh, just have a habit, uh, 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 relation, of the personal enhancement factor. You can see the personal enhancement factor is as, as a function of a quality factor of a nail resonator and also the dazing mode, the mole volume. So if you have a small mole volume, 
or you have a very high quality factor that uh, both of them will give you a very high personal enhancement factor. So the personal factor is that the factor that you, you can get the uh, PO enhancement. So if you want a, a very strong PO enhancement, so you will need the personal factor to be as high as possible. So in this slide, I would like to uh, show you why we need the nano laser. So if, if we have a, the small laser, the small device footprint, it will allow us to have a higher integration density so, and reduce the power consumption and the, uh, the fast switching time. So people wanted to make the laser to be as small as possible. So starting from the 1980, so people were doing a big cell and using the fabric payroll mode and further reduce the size and to, to even smaller by using a uh, whispering gary mode, which is a photonic mode as well, uh, using uh, use the micro disk structure, the freestanding micro disk structure. And then, then uh, keep it shrinking down the size uh, by using the photonic crystal to have a localized uh, field confinement and yeah, uh, realize it lazing. And but uh, due to the diffraction limits, uh, we cannot uh, do the uh, uh, laser cavity size to be uh, uh, even smaller. So starting from 2009, people started to do another approach and it's called plasmonic mode. So it's a plasmonic cavity uh, using the localized uh, strong field to enhance further enhance light matter interaction to achieve lasing. So starting from the 2009, people using this plasmonic mode to make lasers so to try to make laser even smaller. So why we want to do the small laser? It's because we want, uh, in the future, we want to do the integrated circuit on the same chip, like a silicon photonics. So for the application for the optical communication, computation, and the quantum information processing. However, to integrate the electronics component and photonic component is very difficult because they, for the electronics, the size can be very small. However, for the photonics component, the, it will face the diffraction limit. So you won't be able to realize a very small uh, footprint devices. So it has the size mismatch between the photonics and electronic component will uh, be a challenge. So in the future, if you want to integrate all the component on the same chip, like uh, you uh, integrate a laser or filter, CMOS circuitry, follow detector, a passive guide modulator on the same chip, that you will have to uh, yeah, make the la nail laser to be smaller in order to have a perfect interface and to reduce the communication loss and raise the operation speed. So here is the concept. If you look at this chart, that you can see uh, that nanophotonics, it will have a size limit because the diffraction limit, so the size cannot be very small. However, it can operate at a very high speed. So for the uh, electronics, yeah. in the contrary, for the ele electronics devices, the size can be small. However, the operation speed Cannot, cannot be uh, higher than the gigahertz. So it, it's very harder to boost the uh, operation speed to terahertz region. However, if you introduce one meter called plasmonics, it will bridge in the best part of a photonics and electronics like this. So surface plasma is a resonance oscillation of the free electron at interface of between the dielectric and metal stimulated by the incident light. Let me play this. Yeah, so it's a propagate wave. So if you look at this plot and then you can see this is a dispersion of the surface plasma and the photon. So if you see this, uh, you can see that photon and the surface plasma, they will operate at the same frequency, optical frequency at, at different uh, K vector as a web vector. So the web vector is equal to two pi over lambda, which is a uh, wavelength. So which means that the surface plasma will allow a higher K vector, a smaller wavelength at uh, operate at the same optical frequency which means that it would be able to have the ability to confine a light at a very, very localized tiny region. So this is an example. 
This is a gold a bow tie nano antenna. If you do using the FDTD uh, to calculate the electric field, that you will see the electric field distribution and the uh, that there has a very tightly confined uh, electric field, tightly confined at a very small region. So in this region, it's only 30 nanometer by 30 nanometer. So it, by introducing the nano for uh, cosmonics, it has ability to beating the diffraction limit to make the size to be very small and break the diffraction limit. So this is a, a reason why yeah, introducing the uh, cosmonics, it have ability to both uh, reduce the physical size and also raise the oper operation speed. So in this slide, I would like to uh, give you a short introduction of a spacer. So what is a spacer? Spacer is a surface plasma amplification by stimulating emission of radiation. It's uh, uh, just like laser, but the laser is light amplification by stimulating emission of radiation. So instead of using light, we are using the surface plasma. And this theory is proposed by the David Berman and Mark Stockman in 2003. It's, uh, in, if you are interested, then you can check this PRL paper. So by using this concept, we will be able to beat in the diffraction limit. So spacer is so-called plasmonic nail laser. So the, the idea of the spacer is However, the quality factor of the spacer is not very high. It's roughly 100. It's because the uh, metal will have an ohmic loss. So the quality factor will not be high. However, the mole volume can be very small because uh, the surface plasma has the ability to confine the light at a very, very tiny region. So the pressure factor can still be high. So this is a reason why that using space, spacer, the th this theory, we will be able to get a very small laser footprint. So in this slide, I would just would like to show my highest respect to Professor Mark Stockman, who is the frontier of the spacer. So uh, he was uh, he passed away last year. So he's an outstanding scientist. His research was a, a theory theory article nanoposmotics and strong field ultra fast optics and he is a co-inventor of a spacer and this is his uh, um, favorite picture okay so um this in this slide i would just would like to show the spacer and the uh, so-called uh, plasmonic nail laser the history so starting from 2003 the theory uh, was proposed by David Berman and Mark Stolman, the spacer theory. And after a few years, in 2009, the first demonstration of the spacer and so-called plasmonic nail laser is demonstrated by uh, Professor Noganov and Professor Zhang, Zhang Zhang in, uh, at UC, UC Berkeley. Yeah. Hmm. So there, the first one using the metal oxide semiconductor structure and you, to confine the light at the, the dielectric tree layer and to form a, a, a localized strong field induced light matter interaction to achieve lasing. And that's uh, in two, 2012 that, that we, me, uh, I, I was a student in National Tsinghua University and my sister is a professor Phyllis school. So we are using the indium gallium nitride as a gain medium and using the uh, epitaxial silver film as a plasmodic platform. And we create a very thin layer, very tiny layer of a spacer using silicon oxide. And we find uh, the uh, FDTD calculation, we find that electric field is tightly confined as a dielectric layer because it, it's a uh, re re refractive index is smaller. So in this, uh, region that we have a very strong localized field and to form the coupling between the, the photon and surface plasma to achieve lasing. In 2014, we demonstrated the first uh, all color plasmonic nail laser. So in this two work, we're using the MBE growth, the indium gallium nitride, which has a very high 
uh, material quality and the high optical co gain coefficient. It's uh, very important because a, a gain coefficient is 10 to uh, four per centimeter. So which is very high. So th this will uh, give us a benefit because of, uh, if you want to achieve lasing, that you need the optical gain overcome the system loss. So the system loss for the silver is low because uh, it's um, the silver, the imaginary part of the dielectric permittivity for the silver is uh, very low at the, in the uh, visible spectrum. So we will be able to get a very, very low lasing threshold. So this is the first one that, that using CW wave to operate the postmodeling nail laser. And we, at that time, we also demonstrate the second order correlation function measurement to uh, give the evidence that this had this nail laser actually have the temporal coherence signature. And in 2014, uh, uh, we also demonstrated all color postmodeling nail laser, and we further um, find a new mechanism called the auto tuning mechanism. So basically, we, the cavity size is not very important to form a lasing. So uh, because the working mechanism for the achieved lasing is using the localized strong field confinement to enhance the light matter interaction. So people also in this field, including the Professor Nogano, Professor Terry Odom, Professor Feynman, uh, Remy Ma, David Berman, Mark Stoneman, Professor Sean John, and Professor Martin Hill, Perry Berini, Owen Hayes, and Felix Guo, and Lu Ting Tang. So here is the um, review paper just uh, uh, published last year. It's 10 years of a spacer and a postmodeling nail laser. So I'm not, because of that time, I'm, I won't go more detail. I just want to show you that there has a various design and work in the um, various region, uh, like a visible or UV or infrared, it has a different material combination, but uh, all of them are related to the strong field enhance a light matter induction to achieve lasing. So what's a key uh, challenge for the nail laser? So the first is goes to like, how to achieve the smallest lasing mode volume. And the other is a lasing at a very low uh, excitation power. How can we achieve uh, lacing at a very low excitation power? And uh, uh, can we do the active tunable uh, devices and electrically driven is super important and room temperature. Yeah, so when I joined the uh, Academia Seneca, we start to play with uh, other material. So we're searching for a better optical gain media in order to optimize the optoelectronic devices to, to have a nail laser with a low power consumption. So which means that uh, I want to have an ultra low threshold. So we start to play with the material. So we, um, working, I, I was working on the indium gallium nitride. And after that, I, when I joined the uh, Caltech as a postdoc, I play with the 3.5, uh, quantum dots and two six quantum dot like C cadmium cellulite, cadmium sulfide quantum dot, indium phosphide quantum dot, and monolayer MOS2 like TMDC and that highlight perovskite quantum dots. And if you look at this chart, you know, the figure of Murray, and you can see that that highlight perovskite quantum dot actually has a good better optical properties uh, in terms of the quantum yield, the PO quantum yield, the optical gain and emission wavelengths. So it has a very high PO quantum yield, the, as high as 100%. And also the optical gain coefficient can be just uh, 10, uh, up to 10 to four uh, per centimeter. And the emission wavelengths can full color tunable in the whole spectrum. So this is a very uh, good material and that uh, it's a promising candidate for as a gain media for the nano laser. So here is the set for advantage of uh, uh, why we want to use the lead halide perovskite nanophotonics to make it as a gain media for nano laser. It's because uh, the advantage mm, is a high, but the first is a high color purity. So the line width of the PO itself is pretty narrow at the room temperature. 
And also the band gap tunable for visible range and low cost and is easy to fabricate and a high optical gain, and long carrier lifetime, and high, most importantly, high PL quantum yield. So the perovskite is famous for making it, um, using this to make a solar cell. So for the very beginning, the perovskite solar cell, the efficiency is only 3.8%. But last year, you can see here, the efficiency can be boosted up to 25%. 0.2%. Uh, it's a dramatically different uh, race uh, performance. So this is a, means that the ProSky has potential. So the high, uh, it has potential to realize it, high performance optoelectronic devices like LED lasers and solar cells. So in my research, uh, we are using the ProSky to make nano lasers. So this is a collaborative with, with Professor Zhi He. So now it's a, a, a professor at the Hong Kong CTU. So who's using the patterning uh, technique to make the perovskite nanowire. So we measure the perovskite nanowire and using the photonic mode to make lacing. So this is a, a measurement. So we do the pound, uh, power dependent measurement. And as you can see here, this is a clearly show the lacing signature. We do see the kink curve light like king curve and the light width narrowing and occur at the, the power dependent measurement. So the scope is one and this corresponding to the spontaneous emission. And this one is corresponding and the scope is larger than one. And this is this part is um, identified as an amplified spontaneous emission. And after that, this scope is, is back to one. So this is a sort of lazing. So you can look at this uh, plot that you can uh, easily to identify the lacing threshold is over here. So for the uh, time result PO measurement is also tell you the lacing signature because if you, this is a spontaneous emission, you can see a very long uh, photon lifetime is four nanosecond. However, if it occur achieve lacing, that you can see the spontaneous emission rate is dramatically uh, uh, boost up. So which because the spontaneous emission rate is inverse of a lifetime. So the photon lifetime is uh, shrinking down to less than 100 picosecond. So which is the uh, direct evidence that show that this is lazy. So this is a literature report on the ProSky uh, based uh, lasers uh, using the photonic mode. So the, uh, for example, the film case and the, the nanowire and nanowire again, and this is a random laser. So the, for the photonic mode and, or hybrid mode, the large mole volume will make in, make the spontaneous emission uh, coupled the efficiency between the spontaneous emission coupled to the stimul stimulated emission radiation. This efficiency is low because the large mole volume. So the, the efficiency uh, of the uh, energy transfer is, is pretty low. It's not very efficient. So this is a reason why we start to think, can we using the get plus nano cavity to further uh, enhance the light matter interaction to make the spontaneous emission rate coupled to the stimulated emission rate, this factor, this efficiency to be high. So um, this is our idea. So the, the way to do it is to create a get plus mom and using the get plus mom to further enhance the light matter interaction to achieve lasing. So here are set for uh, example of the get plus mom. And so, yeah, I, I think this is a Terry's work and you know, very nice work on the nano array uh, lasing. How, so however, the nano lasing, the single nano lasing, and by using the get plus one nano cavity has not yet been demonstrated. So we start to think that ProSky has a very good optical properties. And uh, can we just using the single ProSky quantum dot and make it lace? So this is our uh, question. So we started to uh, do the experiment and try to find the answer. So the answer is yes. So we are using the um, per cell enhancement in a nano cavity to increase the emission rate of a single perovskite quantum dot and further make it lace to engineer the optical gain and overcome the system loss to make lacing. 
So thanks to my student, Zhang Teng, who is a PhD student at uh, National Tsinghua University. So this is, this is our uh, topic, uh, lacing from the single cone dot in a get plasma nano cavity. So we published it last year at, uh, in ICS Nano. So um, the device design, uh, we are using the silver uh, nano cube nano antenna and underneath is a gold film. So in between, we have the prosci quantum dots and which is only 10 nanometer. So it's sandwiched between the silver uh, nano resonator and also the gold film. So if you look at the field distribution, this is calculated by using the FDTD. So the electric field distribution and that you calculate it, if you assume the quantum dot has a Z, it's a Z orient uh, dipole. So the Z orient dipole will excite the very strong get mode. So the get mode uh, can be excited here. As you can see here, that has a very localized strong field that is distributed at a get region. So this is our design. We have a gold substrate and gold substrate will create a five nanometer AL203, the alumina by using the ALD. Yeah, because we need to uh, have a spacer layer in between the emitter and the, the metal. You cannot uh, just uh, touching the metal with directly with the emitter, otherwise you will get printing instead of enhancement. So this is the reason why we need this uh, aluminum oxide layer. So further, uh, we just uh, place a silver nanocube on top and do the calculation and we find in this structure design, we actually can get a very, very small mole volume. So as you can see here, and the electric field was tightly confined at the get plasma uh, nano cavity. And the dipole orientation is super important because we uh, further calculate another case by just uh, orient using the X orient uh, dipole that we cannot excite any field. And yeah, I will show you later. So this is a TM image of the pro sky quantum dots. As you can see here, this is, it has a very high crystallinity, the, the uh, nearly defect free. And also we characterize the PLQY, the PL quantum yield. The PL quantum yield uh, of the blue uh, pro sky quantum dots and green pro sky quantum dot and red pro sky quantum dot by simply change the, the iota. Mm, that highlight by simply changing the highlight, we will be able to engineer the band gap. So the red uh, quantum dot, the PL quantum yield can be very high. It's uh, higher than uh, almost 100%. And uh, for the green quantum dots, the PLQI is relative high, but the blue is still have a lot of room for the improvement. So this is the reason why we are working on it right now. So this is the actual device looks like the SEM image of the uh, real device uh, with the nano antenna on top and the PL enhancement. So as you can see here, uh, here has, a, this is the um, peroxide quantum dot on silicon and this is a peroxide quantum dot inside a cavity. As you can see the uh, light width is dramatically uh, reduced by when the prosthetic quantum dot is inside the cavity and also the PO enhancement. You can see a very, very strong PO enhancement that like 254 of the PO enhancement uh, for the one inside the cavity. And again, cavity match is very important uh, which I will discuss it later. So this is a, a measurement that we done, the tau dependent measurement at the 4K. So for the green, Perovskite quantum dots, we put inside the nail cavity and we do the uh, light light curve measurement. However, we don't see any kink curve right here, but the, the light width is pretty narrow. It's like a 1.4 nanometer. So this is, uh, uh, we can, we claim this is lazing, but we will have another evidence. We do the temperature dependent measurement to identify the lazing threshold. So in this case at 4K, we won't be able to analyze the uh, lasing threshold because it's undetectable. It's nearly thresholdless uh, laser. So it's, uh, uh, the power is pretty small right now. So for the uh, green 
the, the green quantum dot, it will have a lacing signature. However, for the red quantum dot inside the cavity, same cavity, you only have a spontaneous emission. As you can see here, this is the same uh, uh, region. So as you can see the uh, red quantum dots, it only occurred at uh, spontaneous emission. The light width is very broad, it's over 10 nanometer. Instead of this one, this is a very narrow, it's a, just one point something nanometer. So the quality factor of the this postmodern neural resonator is not high. It's like like 100 or 150. So which is uh, just a proposal by David Berman and Mark Stallman is very in agreement. So this is a lifetime measurement that we also found that uh, spontaneous emission and uh, when it occurred lasing, the lifetime is dramatically decreases. And I just want to uh, point out that the gain media and optical profile, the, the cavity mode and gain media matching is very important for the lasing. When you look at this plot that you see the blue curve right here, is the cavity mode of the uh, nano, the gap plasma nano cavity. And the green curve right here is uh, referred to the uh, PL of the green prosaic quantum dots. And the red one is the PL of the red prosaic quantum dots. As, as, as you can see, the green uh, gain profile is overlap well with the cavity mode. And this is the reason why the coupling efficiency is high. So we won't be able to uh, measure lacing. However, if the gain profile and the cavity mode is slightly off, then the coupling efficiency is bad. So we only uh, result in the measure, the uh, spontaneous emission uh, instead of uh, the stimulant emission of radiation. So in order to identify the lacing threshold, we did another uh, measurement Okay, let me, let me finish this first. So the key question for this is, uh, can we excite it at very, very low power? And also um, uh, below the lacing threshold, can we see the single photon source? Mm. So we, uh, in this slide, we just demonstrate the temperature dependent lacing signature by just raise the temperature to from 4K to 300K, the room temperature. And we can clearly identify the lacing threshold around the uh, 112 Kelvin. So the lacing threshold is pretty, pretty small. It's 1.9 watt per centimeter square, so which is uh, six orders smaller than the first reported value because this is operated at, uh, this is a continuous wave operated laser. So for the temperature dependence measurement, if we took the red equation to do the fitting, that you can uh, just get, uh, have this relation. The threshold and the spontaneous coupling factor is a, as a function of a temperature, just to do the fitting. So the threshold, uh, when you raise the temperature, the threshold is, uh, is a function of a, the temperature and the spontaneous coupling rate is decreasing when you uh, raise the temperature, so which is in agreement. So we further make a hypothesis for, uh, for making the uh, dipole orientation. So we assume the dipole orientation for the, di for the quantum dots, one is uh, the X direction, X or Y direction, and the other is the polarized uh, direction. So we're using this uh, different uh, setup and to do the calculation. And you can, as you can see here, it, you can clearly uh, observe that the electric field distribution for the z orient uh, dipole and the x orient dipole is dramatically different. So if you have a dipole is a z orient, it will excite a very strong light localization, and especially at the, the gap region. However, for the x direction, you barely can see any uh, light localization or strong uh, field enhancement. So this is the reason why in the experiment, we only see the 30% yield. So 30% of the device can lace. Others are, other 60% is only spontaneous emission or amplified spontaneous emission. So this gives us um, an idea that if we would be able to control 
the the dipole orientation to be 100% uh, Z orient. Uh, that will give us a successful rate for magnetizing. Yeah, so the, yeah, the, I think this is a very interesting idea. So I'm, I'm working on it now, try to find a way to control the dipole orientation to be 100% Z orient for the quantum dot case. So it's a very hard, but it's uh, have a, yeah, I think it have a room for the uh, improvement. And for the PL enhancement, we also do the uh, mapping. It's because we just assume that the quantum dot is at the middle, in the middle of the nano cube, underneath the nano cube. However, in the real case, it can be randomly distributed. So we just do the sweeping and see the personal enhancement. And we found that the personal enhancement factor is very high at the corner. So which means that if the quantum dot is set in the corner, at the corner that it will be easily to achieve lasing because that at that corner, the optical gain is very easily to overcome resistance loss to achieve lasing. So at the corner, the personal enhancement is very high. It's uh, 4,000 as we calculated. So we further measure the G2 measurement, the second order correlation function measurement by using the HBT setup. So basically we are measuring the uh, possibility of the photon. So at around the lacing threshold that we can see a thermal bunch and above the lacing threshold, we can see the coherent light. So the G2 value for all the uh, time zone well, the possibility to detect the photon is equal to one. This is, means that, that this is a coherent light. And for the thermal bunch, uh, because the, the photon is a boson, so boson like to condensate. So if you have it uh, amplified spontaneous emission, you will form a thermal bunch instead. So this is a, a very clear evidence to prove uh, this nano lasing is actually nano lasing, has a temporal coherence signature. So the other uh, of my talk is tunable plus modeling nano laser. So the idea is using the titanium. Uh, you, you John, uh, so we I'm might want to. Hmm. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'll be very quick to finish my talk. Okay, I will skip uh, the second part. So this is a tunable plasmonic uh, nano laser. So we're using the titanium nitride and to to uh, make a get get tunable structure. And the idea is using the titanium uh, as an alternative plasmonic material and has a tunable bulk plasma frequency and to control the lasing behavior. So in this work, we are using the up conversion plasmonic nano laser. And because I run out of, out of time, and just want to sh uh, briefly show you the uh, result here. And we're using the net high pro sky nano crystal and just place on top of the plasmatic titanium nitride. This is the first one who use the alternative plasmatic material platform to do the plasmatic laser. So the uh, tit plasmatic titanium nitride, if you put it on the alternative plasmatic cavity, that you can see very dramatic, uh, significant PL enhancement is two, three order of magnitude higher than on the silicon. So that um, the by using this, that we will be able to further reduce the lacing threshold for the nano laser. So that, uh, okay, I will skip this part. And okay, so the outlook for the proximity, uh, for the proscite nano laser is a left free proscite and improve the air stability and using uh, to uh, try to try to study the electrically driven uh, nail laser. So we are working on it right now, the left free proscite and also the uh, lead halide proscite quantum dots, and we are trying to make electrically driven laser. Yeah, so, so here's, here's my summary. So the quick key question and challenge and yeah, and the answer is right here. So we are trying to find the smallest uh, lasing mode volume and the, uh, the very low excitation power. And we actually doing this that by demonstrate the first guy quantum dot lasing in a gap plasma nano cavity with ultra low lasing threshold. And then for the tunable one, we are realizing the tunable plasmonic bass of up conversion plasma nano laser. And then we are, 
working on the electrically driven neural laser right now. So the take home message is a challenge and future prospect for the neural laser. The first one is a room temperature neural laser and the second one is electrically driven neural laser. And the third one is new working mechanism for the neural laser. So this is an acknowledgement. Thank all my team um, for their hard work and um, my current collaborator, uh, Vincent and uh, Harry Edwarder, Ding Ping Tai, George Zhu and Yan Daren and uh, Harry Gison, Owen Hayes and thank the uh, funding agency, especially Academia Seneca, the Co Career Development Award and the Ministry of Science and Technology in Taiwan. And thank my group for their contribution. And this is uh, a yeah, representative publication in the three year. So, and especially this one is just online today. <laughs> So I hopefully I will get, get another chance to show you my recent work on the monolayer MOS2 plasmodic phototransistor. So with that, thank you for your attention and I would be happy to take any question. Great, thank you uh, very much. We, we are running um, a little bit over time. So I'll just ask one question. Um, okay. Related to uh, some of the work that you talked about, thank you for giving us the history and the, the next challenges and stages for uh, the smallest lasers uh, in the world and your progress uh, along yeah. these lines. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked a lot about thresholds and things related to gains and, and losses. What about, um, what is the polarization of the emission from these single particles in these gap plasma yeah, cavities? Actually Actually, in our gap plus mom, uh, the quantum dot cross-site quantum dot neural laser, we did we didn't find any polarization. I think the polarization should be this direction, but we cannot see. Hmm. You mean you tried to, to measure it, or there was symmetry. no? It's no polarization mm -hmm. for for the x y because the x y is the symmetry. Right, but so were you unable? Were you unable to measure? Yeah, the, the polar... unable to resolve the polarization. Oh, to resolve it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's difficult from a single, yeah, <laughs> a little particle, difficult. ten nanometer cube. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Unless you can tilt your sample. Mm -hmm. Maybe, right. but it will be very hard to to uh, use a normal incident direction to measure a tilt sample, and it is a very tiny. Mm -hmm. It's a very mm -hmm. hard to mm -hmm. get a focus. Mm -hmm. Yes, agree. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for your uh, mm -hmm. beautiful talk.